As part of our training series, one of the things that we do is we have a, a class, it's a two-day class, and it's called Methods and Applications for Reducing Fat and Sodium. Now this is a big deal right now and everybody's trying to come up with ways to reduce the fat and the calories and the salt in their diet and a lot of that comes from the food that they find on restaurant menus. So we teach us a simple system in order to reduce fat and sodium we need to have proper flavor development. So this is just an introduction but this is one of the exercises that we go through in this class. What we have here is reduced heavy cream. What we're going to show here is the impact that the sweet, sour, salty, bitter have on flavor perception. And if you have your flavor that is out of balance, then that tends to be why we tend to put more fat, put more salt, we're trying to bump up the flavors. We can start by having the proper balance of flavors and that makes it much easier not to have so much fat, so much salt in our product. What I have here is heavy cream. So I've taken the heavy cream and I've reduced it about, by about a third and I have my different flavors, right? I have my salt, I have my sugar that's going to be my sweet, I'm using lemon juice to give me my sour, I'm going to be using black pepper to give me my bitter, okay? Down here at the end I have that umami, that flavor compound that is generated through MSG that a lot of people talk about. I'm going to do that and at the end I want to talk about the impact that fat has on food. Okay, so the first thing we do is we, we've got to reduce cream and we're going to add our salt. Now this is in, in our class, this is a controlled experiment and everything is put in exactly at the same level every time for everyone. But we mix it in and we get it to completely mix it and we taste it and we see the impact that the salt has. Okay, so I, I've got cream, I have the richness of the cream and I have that salty uh, back, background note. And then what do I do is I want to say, okay, I'm going to now acidify my flavor. So I'm going to add now a little bit of lemon juice to that same cream to see the impact that the lemon or the acid has now on this salty cream that I have. Now, when you take that and then you taste, what happens to the product? Does it change? Well, yeah, now we have, now we have salty and we have sour. Before we just had salty. Of course we have the cream and the dairy, but we had salty and sour. So what does the lemon do? What does the sourness do to the perception of salt? Does it bring it out or does it make it disappear? These are the questions, these are the things that we teach you in our group setting. The next flavor we're going to do is we're going to sweeten it. So we, then we add a little sugar to our cream, we mix that and we'll evaluate what happens now that I've sweetened it. We want to add bitter so we teach use a little pepper, There's other, you could use garlic also as a bitter compound, pepper is the easiest one to use as a bitter compound. We add that to our cream, we taste it. So what do we have now? We have sweet, sour, salty and bitter, the floor taste, right? And now we're starting to get proper flavor balance. Remember when we have proper flavor balance, we don't have to over salt, we don't have to add flavor enhancers, we don't need those things. Umami now this is MSG. Now I'm not advocating using MSG, but this does give you, when you're training to taste, uh, it's a good thing to use to, so that you can see the impact that MSG has on your flavor system. So we add the MSG to our cream and see, okay, what's happening now? When you add the umami to that, now you have a much better rounded flavor. Now you don't have to use MSG to get the umami flavor. There's many other ways to get in that uh, glutamic acid into your flavor. You know, there are a lot of foods that are high in glutamic acid like tomatoes, red bell peppers, mushrooms. These are ways to introduce flavor into your system without having to use MSG. So now we take, we took a cream that in the beginning was very, very salty, unbalanced flavor. We added sweetness, we added bitterness, right? We had all the taste and now we have a much better balanced flavor system. The last thing I want to add to this is fat so that you can understand what fat does to flavor. So let's say I put this all in perfect proportions. Now I have this highly flavored cream that has a sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami profile that I'm looking for that guests really enjoy. So what do I do? What is the propensity in the restaurant business today is to put fat, to put lots of fat. So if I take the fat now, and this is just melted butter, and I take the melted butter and I put it into the cream, 
What have I done to my flavors? Have I made it taste better? Maybe I made it a little bit more rich, but what happened to that sweet, sour, salty, bitter? The fat starts to cover up the flavor. So therein is the dilemma that we're, that we're in. We put all these high fat foods on our menus and this fat is doing nothing but covering up the flavor. Cut back on the fat, we can cut back on some of the other flavors. We don't need to keep adding things to it. This is just part of the class in reducing fat and sodium uh, in, in menu foods. Okay, in addition to learning how to properly develop flavor and properly balance flavor, there are scenarios where you need to get the fat out, you need to get uh, the salt out, and there's some really good healthy ways to do it. You know, the first instance is maybe to grab a flavor replacer, a flavor enhancer. We don't really need to do that. The other thing is, you know, take all the fat out, they start adding starches and things to kind of uh, what's called fat mimetics and if you remember the salad dressings of the 80s and 90s they weren't very good uh, we went we used stuff that was not food to replace what was generally recognized as food we don't need to do that there are some things that we can use and we use them quite often and these are basically different type of gums and when I'm saying gums I'm not talking about something that's produced at some plant if our approach is, if you can't get it in a health food store, we don't put it in the food. And just a few of the simple little gums that we work with is, one is basically uh, carrageenan, right? Carrageenan is a natural product, and it's made from seaweed. We use guar gum also. It's a little bit darker, but these basically all set powder form. And another one that we use is xanthan gum. So carrageenan, guar, xanthan are three of the gums that we use quite a bit. We also use agar agar, that's very common in uh, Japanese cooking, and that's a gelatin, that's a, a, a vegetarian based gelatin, that if we're trying to create a nice thick mouthfeel, because what these do is when you combine them with water and add them to your sauce, let's say you're making an Alfredo sauce, we can take some of the fat out, they gave that rich mouthfeel, and we replace them with some of these naturally produced gums, and it gives us the same mouthfeel that we had with the fat. And this is one simple way to reduce fats in our foods.